Everybody, good morning. Welcome to a Tuesday edition Morning Scone presented by Brock, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic, and Hyco Roofing. HycoRoofing.com. Not the. Sorry, had that audio going. All right. Um, no doubt you heard the news while we were on air yesterday broke from LSU that Miles Brennan, a severe, but that's sorry, I was reading a tweet. Miles Brennan with a severe arm injury. Um, he is uh, out indefinitely. What I can tell you, I know, is that uh, he broke his arm in a um, outdoors accident. So we know Miles loves hunting and fishing and uh, uh, exact details weren't given to me, like exactly what happened, but just it was an outdoors accident. And um, uh, surgery today. And hey, bud. And he will, um, it looks like he will be out for eight weeks. So that was the timeline given me. Um, I'm curious uh, if it's that long. Uh, not to say that, that I know any better than a doctor or, or whoever's going to, you know, however they're, they're going to treat and make those decisions. But, um, we have seen guys play with broken hands before. You put a hard cast on it and play. Um, it's that would be a little unorthodox for a quarterback, obviously, because you have to take a snap. Now, if you're in the shotgun, I presume you you could do it. Ball security, though, is certainly an issue. But um, you it, because it is his uh, his left non throwing arm. Um, that's possible. Now, it's also, uh, I saw Brody Miller reported it's his humerus, which is your upper arm. So it's, it's this bone. Um, so that, I don't know how you cast that, right? Or how you move that, right? <clears throat> if it was your forearm, that would make more sense. But can, can you cast this and play? I, I don't know. So seems like eight weeks is what I was told. Um, if it's eight weeks, that means it takes you basically through uh, September, you know. Um, that would take you to about the fourth week of the season. Um, and that's when you're, you're getting ready to play Auburn. So, or no, Mississippi State, excuse me. So either around that time, Mississippi State or Auburn is when he'd be back. So, um, you know, I mentioned on AFR that um, the, first of all, you feel awful for Miles Brown. I mean, we all know the story by now. He's waited his turn, sat behind Burrow. He's battled a couple of injuries. He had his chance last year and got hurt. And so to be injured in a non-football event is just, Oh, it just sucks. Um, but the, I mean, that's obviously paramount. I mean, let's not get it sideways. Um, the, 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 the positive from a football standpoint, and there are way, way more negatives, but like the positive, the one positive is now you go into fall camp knowing Max Johnson is your starting quarterback, which means you go into fall camp with Max Johnson taking every rep as the starting quarterback, every rep with the ones, every rep to get timing with the receivers, every rep to get his steps down with the running backs, every rep to get the right cadence with Liam Shanahan, every rep. And so you don't have, you're not spending camp alternating. You're not creating potential, you know, factions within the team where some guys want miles and some guys want max. Like it's been decided. Max Johnson's your guy. So now you can spend the next month doing nothing but getting Max Johnson ready to roll September the 4th against UCLA. And that's the positive. So see if they can make the most of it. 
Okay, uh, let's say some good mornings here. Uh, Juan, what's up, man? Mondo Duplantis about to win gold. a boy, Mondo. Uh, wish it was for the USA, though. Brady Smith, good morning. D. Dot, good morning. Uh, Neely, what's up, man? Cliff Nelson, good morning. Aaron Fontaine, morning, Scone, fellow Sconeheads from North Carolina. Listening while I cut grass. Sucks about Brendan. He sure does, man. Uh, Cliff, one snap away from Nussmeyer. Wow, having TJ sure would be nice. Hey, man, look, they ended up in this situation in 2018. Um, they brought in Burrow, if you remember. And they had Brennan, Narcisse, and McMillan. And when they went through fall camp, Narcisse and McMillan both transferred out. And so all you had was Brennan and <clears throat> was Brennan and Burrow. And um, you had Brennan and Burrow. And um, Brennan, during the season, got hurt, which we never knew about. Like, they never made that pull. Obviously, they didn't want it to be public. He was the only healthy quarterback. There was a stretch in the season where Burrow was the only healthy quarterback, and he was backed up by a walk-on. I mean, you're, you're walking a tightrope there. But I mean, here you are again. I mean, you've got, you got Brennan, or excuse me, you got Johnson, you got a freshman in Nussmeyer, and then you're talking about walk-ons behind him. Trivia Carter, what's up, man? Spurge, good morning. Yeah, thank you, Cliff. Smash that like button, YouTubers. Uh, 29 watching, 20 likes. I love that ratio. Uh, Tim Gotro, good morning. Connor O'Neill, feel terrible for Miles. With that being said, I think Max will have a significant stranglehold on the starting job by the time week four comes around, barring anything unforeseen. Yeah, man, look, we'll see. And, I, and here's the other thing, too. Like, you know, let's say it is eight weeks, and it is, as we said, like the Mississippi State or Auburn week. Um <clears throat> Do you really bring Brennan back and say, okay, Auburn at Kentucky, Florida at Ole Miss? I mean, that's your gaunt, you know, open date Alabama. That's your gauntlet right there. Do you really make a quarterback change right then? I mean, not unless you, things are really not going well. You know, and the hope is you beat UCLA and then – you got some tune-ups there with McNeese and Central Michigan to really get rolling. And you go to Mississippi State, hopefully get a win. And then here's the gauntlet in October. I mean, October is going to determine what this season is for LSU. It's going to determine what they're playing for in November. You know, you've got Auburn, at Kentucky, Florida, and at Ole Miss. Uh, that's a brutal stretch, man. Um, where I don't know that any of those games, you're going to be a, see a point spread, certainly not bigger than a touchdown, maybe not bigger than a field goal one way or the other. So... Um, that stretch, that four-game stretch is going to determine what you're playing for in November. Um, where are we? Cliff Nelson passed by Calandro, saw your guy, picked up the weeded Woodford. There you go. Uh, Rich Whitlow, what's up? Jesse Brown, good morning, Matt. Hope you and the family are well. Feel bad for Brennan. Kid has done everything asked of him to be the starter. If he can't come back, is he eligible for medical red shirt? Um... He should be, <clears throat> but I think he's going to be able to come back this year. And they want him to come back this year because you don't want to have just two scholarship quarterbacks. Uh, True X, good morning. Dad, good morning. And remember also with the medical red shirt, like if you're Miles Brennan, do you really want to come back and play another year at LSU if Max Johnson establishes himself? You want to come back and just sit another year? Probably not. Lowell Cormier, unfortunately, due to injuries, Brennan has suffered in his career. We may never get to see his full potential and abilities. I was hoping to see it this season, wishing him the best. Matt Castleberry, Casey Smith, Charlie Cavell, Jeff Stipe, good morning. Tyler Coleman, Bubba Tatum, morning, Sconers. Currently on furlough from Facebook jail. Should be back soon. Just keep posting about COVID or Trump, and they'll throw you right back in Facebook jail. Kyle Lofton, fully expect Miles to be the starter against UCLA. Oh, expected. Hate this for him. One silver lining, QB1, we get all the reps. Mentioned that already, yeah. Dylan Landry, good morning. Kerry Hughes, good morning. Head to Soldier Field for Bears Family Day. Who dat? Uh, one of the sites of uh, one of my worst football memories. 2006 NFC Championship game, Saints-Bears in the snow. Um... Miserable day, miserable people, miserable weather, miserable outcome. Just overall, really miserable. 
Charlie Cabell, Brennan is snake bitten. Um, yeah, you know, also say, man, I want to learn more about the, the nature of his injury. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not saying don't live your life, you know, um, but one thing that I know about Ma, like I know this, is football isn't his only love. And that dude loves the outdoors, hunting and fishing. And I'm telling you, man, throughout his time in Baton Rouge, there was a lot of time the coaches wished that he would have been in the film room instead of in the deer stand. And, man, to each their own. I'm not, believe, I am not being critical of that kid at one iota, all right? I mean, to each their own. Having balance in life is important. <laughs> but do you think Joe Burrow would have been doing what Brennan was doing three days before you open up camp? Four days before you open up camp? That's the difference. Again, I mean, I know that sounds critical. I don't intend for it to be critical because, I, I again... To each their own. I'm sure there's other guys on the team that were out doing whatever they want. This is just the starting quarterback who's been waiting his turn for so long. And the point is, like, at some point, treat your opportunity like the lottery ticket it is, you know? Um, <clears throat> I remember Mettenberger um, in 2013. Mettenberger had one, that fall he had one online course. One. Online. So every morning... Mettenberger would show up at football ops with his Starbucks, wearing his flip-flops, and he would go sit there with Cameron and they would watch film all day. He was a pro. He basically treated that season like, and it showed. He was awesome that year. Then he tore his ACL, unfortunately, in the last week. But um, I mean, throughout, throughout that season, Mettenberger was getting like first round potential buzz. And he tore his ACL and he dropped in, I think, around six or seven. But we forget, because of how all that ended, what his season was like in 2013. But my point is, man, you know. <clears throat> there is, I mean, there is part of the story which goes, why were you doing what you were doing? Um, Brian Wynn, good morning. Scott Bork, good morning. Stephen Miller, good morning. Brian, do you think Miles will ever shoot up for LSU again? Absolutely. Like, do I think he'll start? Probably not. Do I think he'll suit up? Oh, absolutely. This year he'll suit up. Jonathan Martin, good morning. Justin Hutchinson, good morning. Brian and Annie Penton, just like Craig, dad said. How the hell do you break your arm fishing? Uh... Stephen Miller, Max getting all the reps with the ones would be a huge benefit for him. Bright side thought. Uh, Sam Bacon, Brennan Red, uh, Redshirt talked about that already. Um, he he's already had his redshirt year, but sometimes you do see um, because he redshirted twenty eighteen. Uh, but you do see uh, players petition for a sixth year, and I guess technically since last year didn't count for anybody, he is a junior, so he doesn't really even need the medical redshirt. He he could play another year because 2020 didn't count toward anybody. So Brennan is, while he is a fifth year, he's really in classification a fourth year junior, if that makes sense. So he does have another year. He doesn't need a medical redshirt. <laughs> Drew Breitling, morning scone. Do you have updated win totals for LSU after the Brendan injury? Didn't uh, affect it at all. Actually, Drew, I asked uh, Jimmy that yesterday on AFR um, in the last segment and not going to move it at all. Um, it was an interesting perspective because I wondered the same thing, obviously. But, um, uh, you know, I'm paraphrasing. Basically, what he told me is like it would have had to been like a Trevor Lawrence at Clemson, a Joe Burrow at LSU type situation for it to move something like that. Kale Renner, Reynolds, hate to lose Miles. Wasn't it actually Max all along? No, Kale, it wasn't. What I'll tell you is, while 
the coaching staff might have hoped Max would win the job. He didn't do it in spring. And it was very much wide open. And I, I do believe that Miles Brennan was going to start the opener. I think they were going to go through through camp. And <clears throat> you were going to have a pretty even battle. And they were going to side with the veteran. And that and Miles was going to start the opener. Now, I don't think he would have. Now, depending on how he played, would have determined whether or not he kept the job. Um, but I think both were going to play. And, uh, and I think that Miles was going to take the first nap. That's obviously speculative, and anybody can, can have their opinion, but I'm piecing together based on what I know from staff members and um, and how this has worked in the past. Sort of thing. As always, I'll shout out to Brock, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. They're tagged in the Facebook post. Um, if you break your arm and need an orthopedist, they're Brock. And, of course, Hudco Roofing, hudcoroofing.com. Lee Ballius, good morning. Kelly Gross, good morning. Sam Bacon, Walker Howard coming. How about Walker Howard? If you missed it yesterday. So Quinn Ewers, who's the number one quarterback in the class of 2022, and Howard was number two. Quinn reclassified his Ohio State committee. He reclassified and is now a member of the class of 2021. So he's going to Ohio State a year early, which means Walker Howard is now the number one quarterback for the class of 2022. Pretty cool. Um, Where are we? Jordan McNeese, morning. This Brennan deal is tough. On the one hand, if he was wakeboarding or something like that, why take the risk? On the other hand, gotta let the young man live his own life. Um, Sabon Bile salvages metal on beam. Saw that. She got the bronze. Oh, good for her. Seriously, that wasn't sarcastic. Brady Smith, if the quarterback competition was really close, I have a hard time imagining Brennan taking back the starting job after missing these next eight weeks. Yeah, Brady, I mean, the only way would be if if Max is injured or if he's just playing very poorly. Um, and look, that stretch in October, there's a chance it could happen. I mean, it's that's a rough stretch. Um, but, you know, you hope it doesn't. I mean, the hope is, shoot, Max starts in September. You're 4-0 going into the Auburn game, and, and he blows up in October. Apollo Balbo, I thought all these elective surgeries are canceled in Louisiana due to COVID-19. Good question. Well, I guess the difference is if you're LSU and you have your team doctor and like, well, actually, never never mind. That's not an elective surgery. That's an emergent surgery. You can't wait, you can't wait to have a bone, a bone set. That's not elective. Elective would be um, uh, a, a, a knee replacement would be elective. Uh, this is emergent. Uh, strong side. Good morning, Spurge. Why did you have to bring that game up? I'd wipe that from the memory banks. Which game? Now I forgot what game we're talking about. Joseph Norton. Good morning. Alex Day. What was Miles doing? Um, I, I don't know the exact specifics of how the injury happened. Um, I just know he was doing some outdoors activities. Jordan McNeese, exactly. Scone, if you want to be great, got to have that Mamba mentality. Pat Huseman, good morning. Chase Jobert, what's he supposed to do? Lock himself in a padded room. I'm not saying that, Chase, at all. Um, I'm not saying that at all. But I think you also, coming from a guy who's looks like your avatar is you holding a fish, um, I think you also understand, all I'm saying is you have to understand the opportunity at hand. That's all. Uh, Joseph Norton, Garrett Temple back in the boot. Excited about that, man. Happy for Garrett. I'm going to call him today, see if he'll come on the show. Be great to have him on. <clears throat> Garrett, so big day yesterday for the Pels, obviously, with free agency starting. So they whiffed on Chris Paul and Kyle Lowry. I'm not really surprised by that. Um, they had options. Why would they come here, unfortunately? But um, sign and trade with uh, with Lonzo. Um, they get Garrett Temple here. Um, and they have money to spend. So let's see what they do with it. Um, you know, with 
Valanciunas, they picked up a starter. They've, um, let me just see. Let me see how Griffin pieces the whole puzzle together. Uh, Will Hildebrand, can LSU still get a quarterback from the portal for the season? No, they uh, used all of their initial 25. So it's an, it's an important question, Will, because um, some people have asked that. Um, you have 25 scholarships to allocate per class um, for either, and they're called initial 25, so either your high school signees or your transfers that you allocate that scholarship for. So um, when you bring in Mike Jones, when you bring in Major Burns, even though they're transfers, you need an initial 25 to bring those guys in. So LSU signed 23 in their signing class and then brought in Mike Jones and Major Burns. So that's 25, so they have no more spots. They have no more initial 25 spots. So they do not have a spot to bring in another transfer at quarterback. So no. And honestly, I don't know what quarterbacks are still in the portal. I, I mean, and it, it's moot because you don't, have a, you don't have a spot for anybody anyway. Uh, Matt, the Saints cornerbacks, Matt, the cornerbacks the Saints signed, do you think they'll play significant time, can play well, or are they camp guys? No. Um, well, Brian Poole, I think, is a guy they added as a as a nickel guy for, for depth. Um, and it kind of depends. I'd say his role depends on what happens with, let's say, P-Rob or Paulson Adebo. If, you know, P-Rob is a nickelback, but... If Lattimore, let's say Lattimore is out and you have to slide P-Rob to boundary corner, then who plays nickel? If P.J. Williams is really good in that dime roll, uh, of course you got C.J. Garner-Johnson, who's a stud. But, um, you know, that may necess necessitate a guy like Brian Poole getting more reps. Um, as for Prince of Mucamara, he's played his whole career as a boundary corner. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think the, the aim is, the hope is that he's still got some gas left in the tank and he can step in and be that guy opposite Lattimore. Let's see, Brady Smith, current top quarterbacks in the next two recruiting classes are both from Louisiana. That's true, Walker Howard, Arch Manning. Oh, Spurge, the Bears Saints playoff game. Yeah, yeah, oh, brutal. Tad Page, good morning. Very for unfortunate for Miles, uh, but Max will get it done. Godspeed with a full and complete recovery for Miles. Um, Al Cannon, good morning. Miles has better natural talent, but I will never convinced he could lead. Max is tough, and we will be fine if he improves from year to year. He is a born better natural leader. So, Al, I'll tell you flatly, man, that's a really... Uh, that's a pretty big whiff on your part. Um, Miles Brennan is is a really solid leader, and the players do rally around him a lot. Um, I mean, I hate to say you're wrong, but you're just wrong. Um, and as far as a natural talent, I think Miles and Max have different talents. Uh, Miles Brennan's a better arm than Max Johnson. Um, I mean, of all the three quarterbacks last year, it was Finley, Brennan, Johnson quite honestly. But Max is certainly a better all-around athlete uh, than Miles. So it does give you some dimensions in the offense. But the thing that stinks now with Miles out, you kind of lose that, that ability for Max to run the football because I don't know how you call any plays designed for your quarterback to be hit. Um, so you kind of have to eliminate that part of the, of the playbook. Uh, Mark, Max Johnson, and Garrett Nussmeyer. That's it for this year, bro, for now, anyway. Um, Walker debating skipping his senior season also. I don't know that he can, Stephen. Um, just, just specifically talking about St. Thomas More. I, I think, um, uh, academically, I don't think he can skip his senior season. Um, I mean, you have to graduate. And I don't think at St. Thomas More you can do that. Like, if I'm not mistaken, like, I don't even think Jack Besh graduated early. Like, I think you're there for the duration. 
um, the way their semesters are set up. But I know that like that's how it is at Catholic too. Like there's no way Emory Jones is an early enrollee because you can't graduate early. It's just the, curric the curriculum being what it is. I think it's the same way at St. Thomas More. Uh, Brian and a pin Matt, what do you think of the Texas quarterback foregoing a senior season headed to Ohio State? Man, I, um, to each their own. And I guess with NIL opportunities, maybe he's thinking, you know, let me get on campus, get rolling. Uh, Quinn Ewers is his name. But, um, well, the physicality of the college game, even from the highest level of high school, it's just a gigantic leap. And there's some guys who do it, man. There's some guys who absolutely can do it. And Trevor Lawrence, as a freshman, you know, won a championship at Clemson. But, um, boy, that's a tough, tough ask, man. Danny Braywick, I understand LSU doesn't have another spot on the 25. What stops someone from transferring as a walk-on be given a scholarship later? Uh, they could. They are under the limit, Danny. They could. But whoever that is would have to walk on and pay their way. And I don't, you know, like... For for what? For the opportunity to maybe compete for a job? You know what I mean? Like, um, hang on one second. I mean, shout out to Brock, as always, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic, Hudco Roofing. If you're on Facebook, both are tagged in the post. If you'd like the Brock and Hudco pages, that'd be a huge help. Um, um, what were we saying? Oh, the transfer. Yeah, so, like, I guess the point is, like, so if you took a transfer, it, it wouldn't be a, um, a Power 5 guy. I remember a few years back, LSU took a transfer from a kid from Tennessee Tech um, as a walk-on. I mean, like, that's possible, but you don't want, you know, run that guy out there. Stephen Beach, good morning. Stephen Miller, Max playing performance on the field in the first four weeks will prove last year wasn't a fluke. I hope so, Stephen. Keep in mind, I mean, you do have McNeese and Central Michigan mixed in there. It's, it's not like you shouldn't be challenged, I guess is the point. Um, be curious about UCLA, though. I'm... There's, there's some reason for some apprehension about that game. Um, I think LSU wins, and I think they cover. But um, UCLA does play Week Zero, so they will have had a game under their belt. I mean, Dorian Thompson Robinson, UCLA's quarterback, is a four-year starter. They've got their entire offensive line back, um, and they were a strong team last year that gagged away a few games late. Um, like, they had USC beat. They had Stanford beat. Um, uh, anyway, I, I just, I hope LSU goes over there and rolls, and I think it's going to feel a lot like that Miami game in 2018. I think it's going to be a lot like that one. Um, Still, there's some reason to be like, man, just let's let's get that one under our belt, sort of thing, and then then you got you know McNeese and Central Michigan before you go go to Starkville. Uh, Brandon English, Thomas Bergeron, Troy Thornton. Good morning, Stephen Beach. T. Bob says same about Brennan. Lack of film. I mean, Stephen, it's not. It, it's it's a reality. I mean, I've, I'm telling you, Miles Brennan football isn't his only love. He and that's that's okay. Like. It's okay to be well balanced and to have other things in life that you're passionate about and to have, you know, it's like us with work life balance or whatever. And Brennan's got school and football, but he loves the outdoors. He loves hunting and fishing and he spends a lot of time out there. And I know they've had, they've had other former players talk to him and be like, Hey man, listen, and you know, when, when Burrow left, it was like, listen, man, Make this your full-time thing for 16 months, and then you cash a gigantic lottery ticket. 
well, got hurt last year and now he's hurt again. Charlie Cavill, and I'm not blaming him for being hurt. Please don't don't misconstrue what I'm saying there at all. Like, we all feel terrible for the kid. It's just it's a it's just a, a fact. Like that he's not the kid that eats, sleeps, drinks, breathes football from the time his eyes open to the time he goes to bed. Like, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that's the reality. Charlie, if I'm in a quarterback battle, I'm not doing anything to jeopardize that. Chris Williams, morning scone. Do you think Quinn Ewers foregoing his senior year of high school to enroll early will set a trend out for their high school student athletes to leave school early? Chris, I don't think so, man. I mean, remember, first of all, you have to be strong enough academically to graduate a year early. Then you have to be talented physically enough to justify going to school a year early. The school you're committed to has to have a spot for you to go a year early. There's just a lot of factors at play to where it's not like there's a whole bunch of dudes that are going to do that. Juan Armida, good morning. Brandon DeVille, thoughts on the Pels free agency so far? Seems like more moves to come with caps fle cap flexibility. They still have, they absolutely have more moves to come. Um, um, I mean, they can still sign a veteran in the $20 million range. They got the middle level exception still to go. Um, yeah, I'm, it's just who are those players? Let me see that. But you've already gotten a few starters. Um, we'll see. Um, a little bummed about Lonzo, but not completely surprised. I just, I know that he was hot and cold offensively, but he was a guy that was just, Lon that Zion was better when Lonzo was on the floor. So, and if you're building around Lonzo, excuse me, if you're building Lonzo, if you're building around Zion, there was benefit to having Lonzo, that's all. Let's see, Brian and any pin. Let's see, Friday, Matt, instead of how in the hell you got fired on your day off and said how in the hell you got Break your arm fishing. Matt Godwin, good morning. Danny Braywick. JT Daniels did the same thing. Oh, enrolled early, yeah. Matt Delaney, good morning. And you see it, you honestly see it more often in basketball just because you do have guys that are physically able in basketball um, to make that jump. Uh, Cindy Jeffcoat Campbell, sorry for joining late. May have missed it. How did the injure his arm and what is the injury? So um, the exact specifics of it, of how it happened, I don't know. I was just told like he was, I mean, it was an outdoor activity. Um, and he broke his humerus, which is your upper arm bone on his left arm. So what I was told is that uh, surgery today and uh, likely an, an eight week recovery. So that would put you back sometime at the end of September, maybe the Mississippi State or, or Auburn week. Uh, Kelly Presley, good morning. <clears throat> Kirk Elgin, what's up, Kirk? Good morning, man. Been a while. Hope you're doing okay. Thought Brennan was in the lead coming out of spring, but the fan base would scream for Max. First mistake he made. There's probably some validity to that. Uh, Nolan Daigle, good morning from Cypress, Texas. What's over there in Cy there? West Houston. Michael Buckley, any word on restrictions of it or LSU games due to COVID? No. And I'll tell you, Michael, Michael, um, I, what I have been told is they are collectively the, the state government trying like hell to avoid another shutdown. Um, uh, they are going to do everything they can to avoid that. So what I'll tell you, man, is... If you haven't been vaccinated, go get the vaccine. Get Pfizer, it's the best one. Um, wear your mask, because we're all doing that again now, apparently. And however you feel about it, I really don't care. I mean, it's everyone's entitled to their own opinion, feeling, whatever. That I'm, and you all know how I feel about it. But we can't afford another shutdown. And... Like, our, our state and businesses can't afford another shutdown. And damn it, I want a football season. I want a football season with with a full stadium. And I'm worried about that right now. Um, I, um, I did have a conversation with two people last night in Los Angeles. 
And I, I said something like, you know, you know, worried, you know, if there's, you know, there's be fans, um, you know, in the stands, like, and the, and the person replied, oh, I think LSU fans will travel. I was like, no, 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 no. I mean, of course LSU fans are going to travel. I just meant, are they going to be allowed? Or are they going to be allowed to have fans in the stadium? It was like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was basically like in LA, it's like, I the not even a thought there, which was really re a relief for me because I think our mindset is, man, it's so bad right here, right now, we're hearing it's so bad. Like, you know, in LA, they were obviously way more aggressive with shutdowns earlier um, and much longer to reopen. But apparently, like, they've taken all their precautions. Everyone there is vaccinated. They're, you know, the people wear masks, whatever. So their, their spike hasn't been like what we've had here. So that's, I mean, again, I'm not there. I'm just telling you a conversation I had with, and I'll tell you, it's with a doctor that lives in LA yesterday. So that was encouraging for me. That seems like we're going to be able to, to go to LA and see a game and sit in the stadium at the Rose Bowl, which I'm excited about. Uh, Jared Wrinkles, tough for Miles. Hate to see it for the guy on the plus side. We got a very good quarterback taking his place. Yeah, your depth is obviously hit though. Eddie Hayes, you don't have a spot or a scholarship available at NIL. No, you don't. You don't have a scholarship, Eddie. You it's you have to have an initial twenty five to be able to take a guy like that. So you you first and then also what quarterback is in the transfer port, like. Who's a guy that, you, that you're aching to have that makes you better immediately? And if you give up an initial 25, that's one less guy that you can sign. I'll tell you, man, look at like last year, Darren Evans. Like this is a waste, right? I mean, L LSU right before the season went and signed Darren Evans, the grad transfer from Nichols, because they had a spot. And that's a four-year spot that you used on a one-year guy who couldn't play. So you wasted an initial 25 a year ago on a guy that couldn't play. So man, if you're gonna, like, if you're gonna go get Burrow, okay. You're gonna get Cole Tracy as a grad transfer, okay. You're gonna use an initial 25 on Mike Jones, who's gonna be a starting inside linebacker for you, okay. You use an initial 25 on Darren Evans? Charlie as an STM alum. I doubt Howard could leave early and graduate with an STM diploma, maybe a state diploma. It's interesting. Yeah, I don't, I, look, man, knowing Jamie a little bit and that felt like, I don't think that's happening, bro. Uh, Chris Williams, will Cam Wire be the starting left tackle? Yes. Who backs him up? Looks like it might be Garrett Dellinger. Um, I mean, Ogeron said that the next two are Anthony Bradford and Garrett Dellinger. I think Bradford's probably more of an interior player. I guess he could play left tackle. Shoot, man, we saw Josh DeRossick with like two bad knees play left tackle and block Jadevian Clown. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could put somebody out there. John DeRoche, how long till college players unionize? Good question. Uh, it's coming. Jared Wrinkles, you got Pfizer. Yes, I did. Um, I have a relative who's very high up in the hospital system who said get Pfizer it's the best one I was like okay uh, so I got Pfizer Tim Gocho following the quarterback duel in Saints camp keeping reading about receivers breaking wide open I'm getting more worried about our cornerbacks every day um, I think that's certainly part of it I'd also well there's two ways to look at it man you um this this is the, the tough part when it's good on good, right? Are you should you be excited about the Saints offense or worried about the Saints defense? Yeah. I, and I don't know the answer to that. But what I'll tell you is Jameis Winston is going to be the starting quarterback. I've been telling you that and I'm telling you he's it it's a dumb thing. Kenneth Martin, morning Matthew. Uh, two T's by the way, Matthew Ken. I should have told you. Two T's. M A T T H E W. Good morning, Matthew. Uh, now Garrett has to step up big. No way, Kenneth. No, good morning, Matthew. Good morning, Drew. Good morning, number fifteen. Morning, Brock, morning Hudco. None of that? Um, what do you think about his mental status going into this season, possibly having to play? Uh, Nussmeyer, I, man, look, those sons of quarterbacks and NFL players and quarterback coaches, like, 
they're wired differently because they've grown up around it their whole life. Being in big, full stadiums isn't different. Having pressure isn't different. It's just, there's a familiarity. It's just, yeah, I'm not worried about that. Hey, bud! Now, physically, is he good enough to be? That, well, I mean, we'll, we'll find that out in time, but, um, you know. I mean, the turnovers in the spring game worried me. But some, sometimes that's just misjudging the athleticism of a college athlete as opposed to a high school athlete. But that comes with time. Let's see, if Lattimore suspended and our secondary is as bad as I think it will be, do you think it forces Peyton's hand starting Taysom short-term to ground and pound play ball control? No, Eric. It's the absolute opposite. You, you start Jameis because you, especially with Mike Thomas out, you need Taysom in his everything role. Like, you don't ground and pound in the NFL. That doesn't happen anymore. This is 2021. Sean Payton is not going to ground and pound. That's not what Sean Payton does. And he won't do it this year. Jameis Winston is going to be the starting quarterback. Taysom Hill will go back into a slash role. The bigger question is, after this season, does Taysom want to come back in, in that role? Or is he hell-bent on being a quarterback somewhere? And would anybody take a shot on a 31-year-old quarterback who's never been a starter? And the answer is no. So if you want an NFL career, stay in the place that's made use of all of your talents and made you a, a viable NFL player that they can, you know, committed a lot of money to. Jared Guillory, 30 days of the season with a tight quarterback battle. Dan Miles, why don't you sit in your couch, play Madden after practice? Connor O'Neill, imagine that wearing masks and getting vaccinated works. Um, Connor, I'm not going to... Yeah, we're not going to go down that road. I mean, in some respect, we're chasing numbers. Um, but the vaccinated part, I mean, that's not even debatable. Like, just look at the hospitalizations of vaccinated versus unvaccinated people. Um, let's see, Jared, I've been anti-vax since day one. With all the craziness going on, my wife and I will be getting it soon, looking at Pfizer too. Stephen Fry, did you hear the Jameis interview yesterday? Sounds like a completely different human. Yeah, played some bit on AFR. I mean, but the, the thing is, Stephen, it's exactly how he sounded for the last year and a half, every time I've played any interview that he's done. Like, and I've tried to tell people who only focus on crab claws and interceptions that you're talking about a very different human who has been athletically and personally humbled, who is also now vastly more mature mentally and emotionally as a husband and a father than he was as a 19 year old superstar at Florida State. Uh, but yes, it's what I've been saying for a year and a half now, literally since last March. John DeRoche, do the Saints get Aaron Rodgers next year? I'm gonna say no. Uh, Jason Sheffield, Ryan Riot today, no. No Riot today, Friday. Oh, you might be asking about Riot Podcast. Uh, not today, but I did talk to Terrio yesterday, and we are committed to bringing Riot Pos Podcast back for this fall. So, yes, it will be back. Danny Braywick, is there a reason Mondo didn't compete for USA? I know his family's from Sweden. He's also he's always competed under the Swedish flag. I don't know why he chooses to do that. He was born in Lafayette. He went to LSU. He's lived his whole life in Lafayette. His mom is from Sweden, but... Whatever. Anyway. All right, y'all. I think we're just about done. Thank you, Kenneth Martin. There it is. Um, all right. Let's have an awesome day. If you're on Facebook, please like the page. post. If you're on YouTube, please smash that like button. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate it. As always, shout out to Brock and Hudco. You need an orthopedist, you go to Brock. Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. Need a roof? You call us at Hudco. Boy, some ugly looking roofs in my neighborhood too, I'm gonna tell you. There's one right across the way, right across our back neighbor over there. Oh, every day I look at him like, Celeste, can we please just come fix your roof, please? Anyway, all right, um, y'all have an awesome day. Uh, Locked on LSU coming up today. If you're not uh, yet, please subscribe to the Locked on LSU podcast and then uh, AFR3. Peace.